Hi there, this is exercise 7a.2. Yesterday uh, I recorded 7a and realised that one of the topics wasn't overly well explained. I just didn't have enough time to go through it properly. So that's why I've put together this second video. And this is aimed at some questions at the back end of um, exercise 7a. So um, let's have a look at this. Now, one of the things I want you to make sure of is you understand and know some of these. So, for instance, if you, you're meant to know off by heart that cos of pi by 6. Now, in my mind, I, I, I always think to myself pi equals 180 degrees. So as soon as it says pi by 6, I'm dividing that by 6, and therefore I'm thinking 30 degrees, which of course is what it is. And I know that cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. It's one of those things I remember. And you need to remember these as well. I say you remember. Obviously, you can type that into your calculator. It will take a bit of time. And time's not something you've got loads of in these exams. But you can do. Um, but there are times when it's very, very useful to know these off by heart. Um, so, I don't know, tan of pi by 3. Again, I'm thinking to myself, pi is 180. Divide by 3 is 60. Really, it's the same as tan 60. And I know that tan 6 is root 3. And of course, the table tells you it. Can you make sure you copy this table out? Make sure it's in your book if you haven't done so already. Um, the two that aren't necessarily in your book from previous um, occasions where we've done this, when it's 90 degrees and when it's 180 degrees, when it's pi by 2 and when it's pi. So we, we kind of need to know these as well. So just bear that in mind. You can make your table big enough to include all of that. Now, these are meant to be non-calculator questions. So the question you're probably asking yourself is, how are you meant to do it? And um, the answer is, you could use a graph. So for instance, it says sine of 4 pi. Now, sine of 4 pi, I could draw the sine graph. The sine graph looks like this. It doesn't stop, and that's a good job too, because this says go up to 4 pi. Now, 4 pi, if we just remember, um, well, pi is 180, 4 180 is a 720. So that goes up to 360, or 2 pi. And therefore, we have to go up to there before we get up to 4 pi. And straight away there, I know on this sine curve, the sine of 4 pi then is 0. Um, some of the others, you've got to go back and use these. And this is where the cast diagram comes in. So I'm going to do a bit by graph and perhaps link it to the cast diagram as well. So take tan. So the tan graph I know looks like, well, it kind of goes up. Oh, there's meant to go through the uh, origin and not that there. Now that point there is pi by 2, half a pi, 90 degrees. But then it repeats itself again. It gets to here at pi, and it has another asymptote at 3 pi by 2. So these graphs, if you do know them, and I've talked about the possibility of you having a graphical calculator lent to you next year, um, these graphs are incredibly useful. There's 2 pi, for instance. Now, this is the tan graph, of course, and I'm thinking to myself 7 pi by 4. But the symmetry of this, well, the pi by 4, for instance, is there. And you can see the symmetry of this. This is 2 pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, 4 pi by 4, um, 5 pi by 4, 6 pi by 4. This is where 7 pi by 4 is. It's just shy of 8 pi by 4 or 2 pi. And the symmetry of this basically says whatever the value is here, it's the same as here, but negative. Now, I know what sine of pi by 4 is. Okay, sine of pi by 4 is 1. So I know that's 1, so I know this answer must be minus 1. And it's this that you meant to use. Now, the, when we talk about the cast diagram, the cast diagram allows us to look at this in a completely different way without needing graphs. I draw the pi by 4 angle. Now, actually, that's 45 degrees, so it doesn't really matter. There's pi by 4. And if I can draw, and on this one I can, an equivalent angle also to the horizontal axis. This is pi by 4 here. And the reason why I draw that one is because if I was to go round 
almost two turns. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is seven pi by four. And the fact that that leaves this same angle here as pi by four, as I had originally, tells me my answer has got to be the same as this one. Now this one, I know, tan of pi by four, this is why we need to know them, is one. So this answer over here has got to be the same way, or it could be a negative. This is where I use the cast aspect of the cast diagram. And only the car, the, the, the C, the cos, is uh, positive down here. So this must be negative. And so therefore it's minus one. Um, you can do the other two in a very similar way to that. Um, cos of minus 2 pi by 3. I'm going to do this one here. I'm going to try and draw it here. Now, again, two, minus 2 pi by 3. Now, pi by 3 is, um, I know that is 60 degrees. So this must be, when I times it by 2, it must be 120. It says negative, so I'm going to draw it around there. It's something like that. It doesn't matter too much. But you can see that's in minus 120 degrees, or minus 2 pi by 3. Now, by definition, this is 60 degrees. So if I know what the, what is it, it's the cos, the cos of 60 is C-A-S-T. Because it's the angle to the horizontal, can you see how that angle is 60 going to this horizontal? And this angle here is 60 to the horizontal. If I know what cos of 60 is, and I do, cos of 60 is a half. Just check, cos of 60 is a half root pi, pi over 3, then this is, well, again, it's cos. Now, cos is not cos is negative down there, so this is minus a half. And the last one I've got is tan of pi by 6. Now, tan again. So, 5 pi by 6, sorry, I think I said pi by 6. 5 pi by 6 is, well, pi by 6 is 30, so 5 of those is 150 degrees. Now, I need that just to draw the thing. There's 150 degrees. And the angle to the horizontal, this little bit here, must therefore be 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Now, do I know what tan of 30 is? Tan of 30, it's one of those ones we had. It's 1 over root 3. So I know this is going to be either plus or minus 1 over root 3. What is it? C, A, only sign is positive up there. So this is also a negative. They're not always negative, sometimes they're positive. But that is what you do. Now 1 over root 3, your calculator probably says root 3 over 3. Same thing. Okay, minus root 3 over 3. So this is what we're meant to do. So we're meant to know what the values of some of these things are. Um, so for instance, cos squared of 2 pi by 3. Do I know what cos of 2 pi by 3 is? Well, what is the cos of 2 pi by 3? cos of 2 pi by 3. Now that, of course, is 60, so that's 120. So the same as cos of 120. What is the cos of 120? So again, I draw, it's actually the same angle as I had just now. Leave 60 there if that is 120. So it's going to be the same as cos of 60. Is it positive or negative? So yeah, only S is positive there. So this is minus. And minus cos of 60, as I've just shown, is minus R. So this really, or this, by the way, means take your answer to that and square it. That's what the squared means. So the answer is a quarter. Uh, what's the next one? It says two lots of tan pi by three. So I need tan pi by three. Oh, that's one I should know anyway. Tan of pi by three is root three. So this is two lots of root three. And it says plus tan pi by six. But this is actually root three over three or one over root three. Um, now, to be honest, probably the best way of writing that is 2, take out root 3 as a fact, common factor, and you get 2 plus a third, which is 7 thirds. So this is probably best written 7 root 3 over 3. Next one, what's pi by 6? If I sign it, sine of pi by 6, sine of 30, if I sign it as a half. So it's a relatively nice one. It's 2 plus a half, and I've got to square the answer. 2 plus a half is 5 over 2. Square is 25 over 4. Now, this is what we showed you yesterday. 
this is what I've just been talking about, the cast diagram. So I'm not going to dwell on that. Let's do some questions. Where does 5 pi by 6 sit? Well, again, I don't want to dwell too long on it. We've been looking at this. Pi by 6 is 30. This is 150. This is the one we were just doing, I think. That's 150. Notice I always draw it from this horizontal line. Therefore, I'm the one, the one interesting angle there for me is 30, because that's the angle to the horizontal, the little angle. Now, minus 2 by, by 3, oh, I think I've done that one as well. What's that? It was minus 120 degrees. So that goes around to there. Again, on this one, the interesting angle is 60. So this is what you need to take from it. You need the angle to the horizontal. And not, this is to the horizontal, but it's too big. You want an angle between 0 and 90. So given that this, it says, pi of pi, sine of pi by 9 is 0 0.342. Now, sine, pi by 9 is... Um, 20 degrees if you work it out. That's a little angle. Now obviously I could type this in my calculator. We're not meant to. Notice I want 8 pi by 9. And that is 160 degrees. So if I want 160, you'll notice that's the equivalent. But 20 now is over there with the 160 drawn there. So this tells me it's going to be 0 0.342. Or is it? Is it positive or negative? Well... Um, cast diagram. Ah, uh, sine is positive there. It is definitely a positive. Now, what about 10 pi by 9? Well, I've already said that pi by 9 is 20 degrees. 10 of them must be, well, 200 degrees. Now, 200 goes a little bit further. It goes to there. 180 plus another 20. Now, notice that's still got this 20 degree angle to the horizontal. So, again, it will be 0 0.342. The only question is, is it positive or negative? And down here, tangent is positive, sine is negative. Now, this should probably be in brackets. Sine of minus pi by 9. Notice it's over here now. We've gone negative, so the wrong way around. Pi by 9 is still 20. So it's definitely a 0 0.342. All of these effectively will match what you get given. It's in the wrong direction. It's in the wrong quadrant. It's a cosine quadrant, so therefore it's negative. Oh, 26 pi by 9. Well, 18 pi by 9, that's 2 pi. That's going all the way around. So I can ignore 18 of this. This is the equivalent of going all the way around and then doing 8 more, which is the same as this one. So this is just automatically 0 0.342. What about this one? It says cos of 2 15 So 1 15 um, what's that? I think that's 24 it goes in. Uh, Part, if you divide 360 by 15, you get 24 degrees. So that's the equivalent of 24 degrees. And a little angle again. There it is. There's my 24 degrees. Make sure you're good at the conversions. Now I've got 17 of them. Now 15 of them would be a whole pi. A whole pi is 180 degrees. So I'm going... Oh, actually, I've got 2 pi. I just realised so it's really 48 degrees. But it's the same idea. I've got 15 pi to get me around to there 15 pi over 15 if you like and i've got another 48 degrees here so you can see it's the same angle again it's always going to be the same angle that's why they're doing it so my answer is 0 0.914 or is it i've just got to decide is it positive or negative and the cast diagram tells me on this one tangent's positive so that's got to be negative 32 pi now again 15 of these i reckon that's going the same as going 15 is half a turn. Another 15 is a full turn. I reckon that's the same as cos of 2 pi by 15. Because if you go round too far, you get back to where you started from. So that's just a simple 0.914, because that's what it said at the start. And if I go negative on me, it's got a negative 2 pi by 15. Well, the interesting thing about cos, it doesn't really matter if you go positive or negative, because negative down here is still positive. So in actual fact, this is 0.914 again. Um, I've run out of time. Um, well, there were going to be some questions, but I think you've probably seen enough on this now. This one is just use a calculator to do it. So there are some questions that you're going to look at. We are allowed to use a calculator. And I mentioned this before. I'll perhaps do that properly with you in lesson when I see you next. But your job now is to try to do question six onwards. You should already have done questions one to four. They were easy. Now have a go at these for me. Good luck. 
hope that helps.